Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today's video is on our changing coastlines. The learning outcomes of today's video is to define water cut platforms. We're going to evaluate the impact of sea level rise, and then we're going to define different hard structure stability measures of our coastlines, such as breakwaters, groins, and jetties. Here we have a photo of West Cliff Drive, which recently was eroded back into the Pacific Ocean. Um, and this is quite a common occurrence for our coastline since it's a constantly changing um, environment. And so a lot of human built structures aren't constantly changing and that sort of conflict causes um, some issues in our, in our society. So long-term sea level change, we've talked about waves, which are sort of instantaneous changes in sea level. We've talked about tides, which are like day changes of sea level. And then we experience sort of long-term periodicity to the sea level um, experienced on Earth. These can become from glacial melting, isostatic rebound, that is basically the uplifting of Earth and tectonic activity. Uh, and this can be observed in the landforms that we see. Uh, the deposition of specific types of sedimentary rock is expected for deep water and sort of intermediate water and our shallow water. So our shallow water is going to make more sandstone on the geologic rock record. And then the deep water is going to make more shale and more mudstone because um, that really fine particulate matter is what's settling to the bottom of the deep ocean. As these, these sea level changes, um, those things, those the location of those deposits changes horizontally as things move up towards the shoreline or down away from the shoreline. This also causes a geologic formation called wave cut platforms. So the cliffs that you see um, on the coast are cut from the waves at some point. They were at that, that region and they eroded underneath that cliff and caused them to fall down. Um, these cut platforms make like a series of steps. Here in our photo, we have um, really fine granular steps. Usually it's a lot larger steps. Like here you have these big cliffs are technically wave cut platforms. Um, but even here you have some fine formation that's made these, these fine steps, um, these fine platforms that have been eroded by the sea level. So when the sea level changes, it erodes the sediment, the, the ground to that water level. And then as it drops down, it erodes another platform. So it it, it is at one level and then it drops to another level and it erodes at that level and makes just a bunch of steps downward. And that's called a wave cut platform. Sea level rise is something that we're experiencing currently on Earth due to global climate change. Um, and this is going to be a huge issue for many coastal communities. Uh, the actual increase in the level of the sea is not that much, but that is, uh, you can multiply that number that you increase in a change in height times four or five for a change in inland area. Um, and so you're making sort of like a, a triangle of water that's going to um, basically uh, inundate these coastal communities. Here we have some projections for uh, water inundation of uh, the Bay Area. San Francisco, uh, certain parts of the city are actually very low lying, um, like the Tenderloin is already experiencing issues of ground subsidence. And so that's only going to become a larger issue. Um, and areas in South San Francisco by tw to 20, 2100 um, will be chronically flooded in Oakland. Uh, these other wildlife areas and islands are also going to be more consistently flooded. So sea level rise is something that's going to affect all coastal communities. It's going to affect all of them differently, but it will um, be felt by everyone living on the coast. And so um, to mitigate our changing coastline, humans have built a lot of coastal engineering measurements to stabilize them. And this is called coast stabilization. 
Um, we're basically taking these ebbing and flowing of our, our sandy keys and locking them in place with, with different measures. So here we have, uh, a, there's the option of building a groin or a jetty. Um, they're the same structure. So a groin is built perpendicular to the shore to capture sediment. And a jetty is the same principle, but it's built at the inlet of a river. So I want you to look at this photo and think about which one this is. This is a groin because it was built perpendicular to the shore in the beach. There's no outlet uh, pictured here or inlet. So um, it's just a groin and it's capturing sediment. So remember our longshore transport across the coast is going to move sediment in that direction. But this acts as sort of a comb and captures that sediment and prevents it from being transported all the way down the, the beach line. Another measure is called a breakwater, which is a bar that you build parallel to the shore in the water to break the water before it reaches your, your shore. And this deflects wave motion. It helps um, de-energize the wave, which is then going to make the erosive capabilities of it a lot less. Um, I forgot to mention, all of these are built out of rock, big rocks and in environmental engineering, that's called riprap. So every, anytime you see a large collection of rocks, it's actually like a, a designed purposeful thing. Someone has looked into the size of these boulders and what's the best material to use. Uh, and so that material is called riprap and they're used to build structures like breakwaters, groins, and jetties. And so that concludes our video for today. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions.